Somebody say amen. amen. The Lord is in this place. Yes. I'm here to tell you. I want to just say to the Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I ask, Father, that you just make me small. Make me as small as I can be, Father. Just leave just enough of me, Lord God, Father, just to know what it is you would have me to do. I pray that everything else, Lord God, just be blotted out for right now, Father, because the flesh, Lord God, sometimes gets in the way. But I know, Father, that you got it all under control. I glorify and honor your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to ask you a question right now. If you want to, I want you to turn to Ecclesiastes 8 and turn to Isaiah 2. Ecclesiastes 8 and reach it in and grab verse 9 and Isaiah 2 and grab verse 22. And I'm going not going to be just but a couple of minutes. But I believe that God is in the house and I, I'm going to take my watch off. Just to make sure that I'm obedient. When you got it, say amen. Amen. Ah. If you're still looking, say, whoa, man. Whoa. All right. Ecclesiastes 9, 8 and 9, Isaiah 2, 22. Turn that just for a minute, please. And this is just one thing, you know, I find. How many of you, as you were getting the offering together, were conscientious of the person next to you? Just raise your hand. Were conscientious of the person next to you as you was getting your money together to put in that offering plate. I want you to be honest now. How many of you were sort of conscientious of the person next to you as you were pulling your money out, getting it together, getting it ready to put in, that somebody may be looking over to see what you were doing and this and that? Because you know, sometimes we have a problem with folk. You know, I want you to read. As I read, I'm going to read. Uh, Ecclesiastes 8 and 9 say, I have thought deeply about all that goes on here in the world where people have the power to hurt each other. And then I want to go to the New American Standard and just break it down. It says, all this have I seen and applied my heart unto every work that is done under the sun. There is time wherein one man ruleth over another to his own heart. And, and, and if you listen to Isaiah 2.22, it says that, See she from man whose breath is in his nostrils, from wherein he is to be accounted of. And the New American Standard would tell you like this, Stop putting your trust in mere humans. <laughs> they are as frail as breath. And how can they be of help to anyone? I take a seat in the presence of the Lord. And my question to you is, my, my, my thought for you is right here real quick, is just that sometimes you just have to let folk be folk. <laughs> hey. Come on, somebody. You know, because <laughs> how do you handle situations when you are just hurt by someone? What do you do when someone just falls short on you? What do you do when somebody's hand starts to change? We know that when we grab the master's hand, that God has an unchanging hand. Yeah, but yeah. you grab your brother's hand. And even sometimes you can grab your mama's hand or your daddy's hand. And that hand can change on you. Yeah. And I know it's true because I've been there. Come on. How many children you see right now homeless because they were held by their mother and father's hand? Mother and father can't even hold a hand because they own so much crack and so much this and so much that. Go ahead. They don't even remember the children or know where they're at. Somebody ought to say glory to God because his hand never changes. But I'm going to tell you right now, these situations and these things and these relationships we have with folk sometimes will get you down. Ah. Folk will drain you. Yeah. Take everything out of you. Pull it out of you. And you find yourself beat down and tired. Ahead, and then they Pastor. say, what is wrong with you? Come on, I feel my help coming on. Somebody will say, what's your problem? And they say, oh, I'm just tired. Tired of what? Oh, well, I had. Uh, and sometimes you don't know. But I'm telling you, you're tired because folk sometimes will just be folk. You got to watch yourself when Go you're ahead. dealing with people. The Bible.
Bible says that we must love them as we love ourselves. Yeah, it didn't yeah. say that we had to take them and put them in our pocket. Come it didn't say that you had to take them home and babysit them for three, four months. God will tell you when it's appropriate to do something like that. But the bottom line is you can't save the world. You can only do what the Lord has petitioned you to do. Yeah. And that is it. You have to understand that you can't get yourself down every once in a while when you see something that just ain't right. Don't let the burdens of other people just cloud you up. I'm going to tell you every once in a while you have to identify with your own problems. You can't do nothing with somebody when you all jacked up. Sometimes you got to straighten your own self out. Woo. Sometimes as Christians, we, 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 we are subject to hurt and pain, but when it happens in the church, it can be devastating. I'm going to shut up in a minute, but I want you to understand something. There are three things I want you to remember here. You must trust in your expectations from God. We know that God is real. God's hand will never change, and you can expect God to be true to his word. Yeah. Know your expectations from man. Yeah. You must know them, but don't put your full trust in them. Right. Trust in God. Right. The second thing is you must stay close to God and give man room for his sin nature. Somebody in here ought to know they damaged goods. Some of us can't identify with that. Somebody always seem to have a problem saying that, yes, I am all messed up. Well, I'm here to tell you right now, the pulpit is messed up. The ushers are messed up. The people sitting in the pews are messed up. But God, God, God is everlasting. God can fix anything. If you trust and believe it, that he is who he is. I believe my Bible says that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. You can't tell me that he ain't all right. <laughs> good God from Zion. I love him. He's been good to me. I'm here to tell you that it took me two wives to get it right. 18 years right now today I've been married to this woman. God Nobody but God. And I love her to death. She's my sweetheart, my lover, my friend, my chauffeur, my cook, my mama, my everything sometimes. Everything but my God. The God Almighty. Proverbs 31 told me what I was getting and I got it in her. Every once in a while I think the men need to go back to the word of God and find out that we are caretakers. And we can't let folk influence us and let us run out on our responsibilities. We can't just be folk sometimes. You have to realize when you're being folk and understand when you step out of the line of God's will. I'm going to shut up right now, but may God bless you and keep you. the living Lord fall fresh in this house today, O oh Lord. Yes. Spirit of God fall fresh in this house today, O oh Lord. Yes. The spirit of the healer fall fresh in this house, O oh Lord. Oh, our mighty provider fall fresh in this house, O oh Lord. Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God, we come to give you praise, glory, and honor. We come to magnify your name, O oh Lord, on high. We came to give you glory, Father God, for you are worthy of all our glory. Father God, we come to submit ourselves unto you, to fall at your feet, O oh Lord, and to be directed according to your word, Father God, that we shall depart. We shall depart as spiritual servants of the most high God. We praise you, we honor you, and we glory. Yes, sir. In Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen, amen, amen. First Baptist, it's an honor Mercy. to be here. And I just come to tell you that you are blessed.
You are blessed to have a man of God, a man of God that dedicated the first year, the first seed to the spirit of the Lord. Yes. Putting all other things aside because the word of God said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all things shall be added unto you. And that first few offering is going to multiply beyond your imagination because the spirit and the anointing power of God was placed first. Watch God move. Miraculous healings are already present, but God is far greater than that. More than you could ever imagine is he the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the God Almighty. Stand, if you would, and turn with me to the book of Mark. I'm only going to take a couple minutes of your time, if that long. But Pastor Williams, my father, my protector, the governor of my soul, I thank you and I love you and I'll shout that beyond the mountaintops and I thank God I thank God I'm gonna briefly reflect on what pastor has done for my life for my life shortly if we would turn to the 12th chapter of Mark and roll down to the 29th verse. And I'd like for you to repeat after me in the black and with me in the red. And Jesus answered him. And now I want you to rephrase that just a little and say, and Jesus answered me. And Jesus answered me. One more time. And Jesus answered me. And Jesus answered me. All together. The, the first of all the commandments is hear, O Israel, the Lord our God yes. is one. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. There is but one Lord. Yes. There are people seeking other lords uh -huh. seeking to find a deliverer that will provide them with their heart's desire. Mercy. Some seek it in a Buddha. But I tell you today that a Buddha was a made by a man. And if the man created it, I dare to say I will serve it. All but right. the creator of all is the Lord. Yes. And when we seek the Lord with all our heart, all our mind, all our spirit, all our soul, all our being, there is no way... No way, Come on. no way he will not give you your heart's desire because you have first put him first in your life. In your marriage, put him first every day before you get out of your bed. Put Christ first. Christ first. And then you put your family. But with the instructions of the Most High God, you will never fail. You will be walking and talking examples of what God will be. You will be celebrating a 25th anniversary in the presence of the Most High God. A 18 year anniversary in the presence of the Most High God. For if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where where would we be today? I guarantee you it wouldn't be where we are right now, but because of his grace and because of his mercy. Huh. 
Every day is sweeter than the day before. Every day is sweeter than the day before. When you put Christ first, the one Lord, the one creator, the one alpha, the one omega, he that every knee shall bow to and every tongue shall confess to. He is the Lord. The Lord of lords. And I know that in my soul and I know that in my spirit and all that I am and all that I'll ever be, I know that it is because of the Lord. Lord yes. of the Lord yes. of the Lord but the Lord will put in your life a covering the husband is the covering over the wife Amen. 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 so be the best covering that you can be and remember that Christ is the covering over you and as you love your wife as Christ loves the church everything in your life is gonna blossom like a spring flower and the fragrance will be sweeter and sweeter and sweeter that's the goodness of God that's the goodness of God first Baptist your covering is your pastor you are to pray for him morning noon and night you are to sacrifice for him. For if you give unto the man of God what you give to the prophet, you shall reap the rewards of. Bless him, for he is truly a blessing. For my life, for my life, he has covered me. If any of you know anything about spiritual warfare, you're looking at someone who struggled almost every night with the devil trying to kill me did not want to go to bed did not want to sleep my husband thought I didn't like him very much but it was because I was so tired of Satan trying to kill me every night I closed my eyes I knew we would be battling I knew, I began to blame my husband for some of it and blame my uh, family members for the youth years of it because it began at age 11. However, when you go through years of torment and you know the devil hates you and he wants you dead for whatever reasons, you may not know, but Satan knows that there is a greater call on your life and he's going to do all that he can do to stop God's work from being completed. But I tell you, after 20 some years of a battle, I took my complaint to pastor over five years ago. And as I began to pour my heart out to Reverend Williams, he sat in his chair with his arms folded and he just listened, just as unconcerned in my mind as he could be. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, does he understand what I really go through at night? Does he really understand? And at the end of the session, he looked at me and he said, daughter, from this night on, from this night on, you will have sweet sleep. Never again will you be tormented. And I tell you today, from that night on, I have had sweet sleep. He prayed the enemy right out of my spirit. He prayed the enemy right out of my bedroom. He prayed the enemy and he alone. Glory to God. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He allowed me to have sweet sleep. The same thing I'd ask God for a thousand times. But when you are covered in the proper order, no weapon formed against you will ever, ever prosper. 
Love you, Pastor. Love you, First Baptist. May the Spirit of the Lord dwell within you henceforth and forevermore. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First, giving honor to God, the Lord and Savior of my life and soul. Amen. Next, giving honor to the shepherd of this house, the Dr. Reverend Clarence E. Williams, who is also my father in the ministry. Amen. Next, giving honor to my pastor and father in the ministry. Dr. Reverend Owen D. Johnson. Amen. Amen. Looks like there's some duplication going on with the doctors and doctors in the house. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless you. If you would turn with me to the book of Luke. Lord have mercy. And we're going into the first chapter and we're going to read from the 45th verse and we always stand for the hearing and reading of God's word because we know that God's word is living and his word our life, amen, amen. And in him we have our being, amen. Would you all agree with me this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah. God put this verse in my spirit some years ago as we were preparing for a explosion of a woman's conference, amen. But this word is true to all people, and it reads, from the NIV, it reads, Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. Amen. You can have your seat in this house today. Amen. I'm going to, I'm going to set it up a little bit, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about my life. Amen. Take your time. God has been speaking to me about relationship versus religion. Amen. Ah. And I believe that God speaks to all of us who has his spirit. Amen. Would you agree? All right. Amen. Yeah. And I believe that every one of us, God has showed us a glimpse yes, of something that we are to become. Amen. How many of you agree with me this morning that we are becoming? Yes. Amen. We are becoming perfection. We are becoming like him. Amen. Amen. But first you have to believe yes. that what God has said to you yes, shall be accomplished. You have to have belief. Amen. That is what activates your faith. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Faith doesn't move on its own. You have to have belief. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Turn with me really quick to 1 Peter. Amen. We're going to the second chapter and we're going to the ninth verse. And I'm going to tell you why. Because God saw something in me just like he saw something in you, amen, worth saving. He saw himself, amen, hallelujah. hallelujah. And it reads, but you are a chosen people. Yes. There is purpose in your life this morning. You are chosen for something, amen. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God that you may declare the praises of him who has what called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light, amen. Hallelujah, God has purpose on your life this morning. Hallelujah, I was a teenager and I got pregnant, had a child. People told me that I was gonna repeat the same things over and over and never amount to nothing. But God showed me in the pulpit preaching. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I thought I was hallucinating, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> And ever since that day, the devil had declared war against me, amen, because God had put something in me that needed to come out, hallelujah, hallelujah. The brother said he made copies of his word, amen. How many of you know that you are copies of his word today? Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm talking about believing what he said shall be accomplished this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There is a word 
that you all carry that needs to go out. Amen.